voice of my supplication. Let me greet you all congregants of Pretoria City Mission and the community of Christians at large. This is the fifth Sunday of Lent and it is a pity that we meet through this media. Even though we are not physically together, let us join in the sermon in spirit, knowing that God still reigns in our lives and still in power. He is wonderful and capable. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are strength to those who suffer and comfort to those who grieve. Let the prayers of your children who are in trouble rise to you. We claim your promise of wholeness as we pray for those who are ill or are suffering loss and long for your healing touch. Make the weak strong, the sick healthy, the broken whole, and confirm those who serve them as agents of your love. To everyone in distress, grant mercy, grant relief, grant refreshment. As we begin to rebuild, we commend our neighborhood to your care. Give us strength of purpose and concern for others that we may create a community where your will may be done. God of compassion, you watch our ways and even our terrible happenings. You come up with wonders of goodness and grace. Surround those who have been shaken by tragedy with a sense of your present love and hold them in faith. Though they are lost in fear of what the coronavirus is doing to the world, may they find you and be comforted through Jesus Christ, who was dead, but lives and rose this world with you. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The scripture for, to, for today is taken from the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 6 to 11. Romans chapter 8, verse 6 to 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. From the scripture that we have read, our focus will be on verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies. In this epistle to the Romans, Paul emphasizing two things that I would like us to look at. One, the power of choice. Choosing the spirit to dwell in your flesh. Two, the power of the spirit. The miracles that are associated with the spirit you have chosen. Let's focus now on the power of choice. Everybody has the power to choose. It is important when using this power 
to apply your mind because choices have intended and unintended consequences. Paul says we set our minds on the flesh, we are choosing death. And when we set our minds in spirit, we choose life and peace. The choice seems so clear. Who doesn't want life? Situations make us forget where the target is and we end up losing focus. When to make choices, there are six principles that we have to keep in mind. One, you obey God. He has clearly expressed his will concerning many real life matters. Two, note already existing facts. Never take chance when making crucial decisions. Look before you leap. Number three, do not rush to take decisions. Four, weigh the consequences. Some consequences follow you beyond death. Listen carefully. Pay attention even to the inner voice that always warns us. Pray about your choice you are just going to make. Let's take the second part that we would love to focus on, the power of the spirit. Paul says when you choose spirit, you choose life and peace. Let us see where this comes from by looking at few examples. In the Garden of Eden, Adam was perfectly formed by God. But he had no life until God shared his spirit with him. He started working with God. He started talking, taking initiatives, making choices, and fulfilling his life purpose. Seeing the spirit at work, we can say we need exactly what God breathed into Adam that day. All that can be granted to us. It's a matter of choice, whether we want it or not. The second example that I want us to look at when we are looking at the power of the spirit is the valley of the bones. That is spelled out in the book of Ezekiel. This resembles different situation we find ourselves in, where everything seems to be dead and we end up losing hope. Please note that there is still good news even in bad situation. When God gave those born spirit, they all came into life. Note that his spirit came from four winds, meaning that it came from four different corners of the earth. This means there is no place where his spirit cannot reach us if we avail ourselves. Also notice the shaking that took place in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 7. When God is at work, he shakes us up from our comfort zones. Even in this pandemic, we feel his hand waking us up giving us a nudge to make right decisions. Are you alert? Are you awake? Do you feel his hand? We better wake up and make good decisions. Our lives are like passenger planes, which are designed to fly in two ways. There is the skill of the pilot to navigate the machine when it takes off when it is in the air, and when it lands. On the other hand, there is the command they receive from the control tower that makes indication whether it is safe to take off or land. Jesus is the pilot, and the spirit is the control tower. For these two to work in harmony in our lives, faith is crucial. See, when Jesus assisted the family of Lazarus, he asked Martha, 
whether she believed that those who believe in him, even though dead, will live. When she said yes, he called Lazarus from the dead and came as a living being. We need to keep faith and believe that the power of the Spirit will save us from the sketch of the coronavirus and from other dire situations we find ourselves in. Listen, God's voice is calling us. Look, God's arm is extended to us. Let us make good choices and receive the power of the Spirit from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God is our refuge and strength. He is present to help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth seems to be changing, though the mountains shake, though its waters roar and foam, we know you, God, that you are in our midst in all the situations, and therefore we shall not be moved. We also know that, O oh God, you will help us when the morning dawns. We accept that you are Lord of hosts and that you are our refuge. Holy God, you are our comfort and strength in times of sudden disasters, crisis, or chaos. Surround us now with your grace and peace through this ravaging disease. By your spirit, lift up those who have fallen. Sustain those who work to rescue or rebuild. And fill us with the hope of your new creation. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Go out there in the world now knowing that God is listening and is sure to respond to our cries. Shalom. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.